What's up guys, Thomas here and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the setup of the DJI Goggles V2. All right guys, so we have all our items here later on the table that we saw in our unboxing video. If you're coming from that video, welcome back to the channel and thank you. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link down below and above where you can see that video. So anyways, here's all our items here and we're gonna start off with all the physical aspects first. So we'll start off with the head strap here and work our way to the antennas and also the inside here. Top strap here goes on top. We're gonna fish this through. It's gonna work right there. There you go. And the third one, we'll just fish this through here, right here. So this is obviously customizable and that's gonna change based upon the size of your head, the size and shape of your head. So let's try this out and see if it's comfortable. All right. Oh yeah, that feels a lot better. <laughs> let's get these antennas on. So I'm eager to put this battery in and power this up, but the number one tip here is never power up any accessory, especially transmitting or receiving accessories without any antennas on here. So they're all similar. I don't think there's any difference between these four antennas. So they're all the same. All right, perfect. Obviously we don't want to over screw it, over tighten it and damage the threads. But at the same time, you do want to have a good connection on it. All right. Next thing here are these screen protectors and it says warning, keep lens away from direct sunlight to avoid damage. So we talked about that in the unboxing video. So let's just remove these screen protectors. All right. Those are awesome. All right, let's power this up. We have our battery right here. It doesn't come fully charged, so you will have to charge this thing. Mine does come with two out of four bars. Wow, that's a nice tight fit. That's not coming out. And then you have it right here, your power. It says power, put that in there. Now, if you need to adjust this, uh, by all means, uh, these like diopters, adjusters, you can adjust these. I haven't put this on yet, so I don't know how far or how wide I need to have this spread apart. We're just gonna power this on and see how it looks for now. So two presses, one press to uh, see the battery level, second press and hold to power up the device. So let's see what it says. All right, so you heard the fan. It says DJ. It's gonna be hard to see this on camera, guys. All right, guys, let's see if I can see this with the glasses on. I don't, I didn't plan on doing that. I, I, it's not bad, actually, it's really good. As I said, I'm nearsighted, but I wanna see if I can put this on with my glasses. Pretty impressive, guys. It's very doable. For my prescription, it's doable, but the image is clearer with my glasses on. Yeah, it's significantly clearer with my glasses on. So, thank goodness that DJI did design this to be used with your glasses. All right, guys, so this thing is almost set up right here. The last part is all now software or electronic based. So we're just gonna go on the computer back here and these items need to be activated by DJI. So that's one step that's different. DJI always requires that you activate their products and they also do a firmware update as well. So let's go to the computer and get this thing activated. All right guys, we're at the computer here and the first thing you wanna do is download the DJI Assistant app here. Make sure it says DJI FPV series. I made the mistake of just downloading the, the regular one and it was not connecting to my goggles. So you have a version for Mac and a version for Windows as well. So I did the Windows, installed it, and here we are. This is the DJI Assistant app right here. So let's just power on this goggles and connect it to the computer. All right, and now it shows DJI FV Goggles V2. We'll click on that, activate. So we wanna activate the device here. So start activation. All right. All right, so start activation. All right. All right, so this thing is activated here. All right, let's just, let's just upgrade. All right, start update, do this thing.
All right, guys, so we have the goggles and the drone air unit updated with the latest uh, firmware. We're gonna head back to the table, bind it, and then see if we see an image. So okay, guys, we're back from the computer. That took a little bit longer than I expected. Anyways, we're back here. The firmware has been updated and the goggles has been activated. So we're just gonna reattach our battery here. Before we put this on, let's insert an SD card. I have a 128 gig SD card here. There's a dedicated SD slot in here and it's in there. All right, so let's power this thing up and then try to bind this with the drone. Okay, so while that's loading right here, I have my drone here, I have a digital drone. This is the Beta FPV. This is the X Knight 35. Pretty nice drone, all digital. Now the process here is very simple to bind your goggles to a digital system. You'll need some kind of a pin. I have a SIM eject tool and that's gonna be my choice for binding this. All right, so here's the bind button right here. There's a red button, I have my pin. Hopefully you can see that. All right, so it's beeping. Power up the drone. And there's a button here. There you go, it's red. Now it's green. So we have a successful bind or pairing and the image looked pretty good, guys. I don't know, DJI products uh, is very sophisticated. Um, it works really well once it works, but a lot of their, in order for things to work, just like in the past with any DJI product, before you use it, you have to activate it. You have to do a firmware or software update. And that's cool because they want you to have the latest firmware, but also it can either add restrictions or add different things to your product. All right, besides that, the image looks pretty cool. I haven't tested out the range yet. We're gonna go for a flight here, see what I think. And when I come back, we'll give you my final opinion on the digital system and see if it's right for you, if it's recommended. Okay, so we're back from the flight and I've had the chance to use the DJI Goggles V2 for a few weeks now. And simply put, this thing is awesome. And the biggest benefit of these goggles is just the clarity. Obviously, it's digital. But yes, it gives you the confidence in flying your drones, guys. Whether it be through gaps or just flying around trees or twigs in trees. It's simply amazing and the clarity is just undescribable, guys. The second thing is that the range on these goggles are really, really good and very predictable. And what do I mean by that? Well, other testers have used these goggles 
up to around 13 kilometers and that is pretty much the limitation of these as far as how these goggles communicate with the VTX. So I have not flown that far obviously but with my testing so far it is really really good. So it's really easy to predict the range of these goggles. And what I mean by that is that as you go further, you get to see more and more pixelation in the image. You still get to see an image, but it's not as clear as when you're closer to the drone. Now in the analog world, sometimes you would just get, you know, some pixelations or some static, and then you just lose it altogether. But this gives you a good indication of how far you're going with the drone and whether or not you're gonna lose the image. And as I said before, you don't just lose the image altogether. You see a little bit of pixelations in the corners and then it gets more and more pixelated and more delayed image transmission. So it's a really good indicator when to turn back and come back to you with your drone. So the third thing here is the latency. The latency is not that bad. Now I'm not a latency snob by any means. I just fly cruising around and you know flying through gaps and doing small maneuvers. If I was racing, probably this wouldn't be the best for racing, but just for everyday flying and doing some freestyle tricks, this thing is more than adequate, guys. Now, having said that, there's some things to know here. The first thing is that there are an abundance of cameras on the market. I flew this with the Cadex Polar. This is a really nice camera, and it's good for like low light situations. So if you're gonna fly in the evening time or in the morning or at nighttime, <laughs> Um, yeah, if you can fly at nighttime, then this is a really good camera, probably the best camera still for nighttime flying. But all the image you saw today was on that camera. So what I, what I mean by that is that there are so many cameras on the market right now that you might have different performance. You might have cameras that are maybe worse than this or some that are better. And some of the things that could change based on your camera could be the aspect ratio. This one has a 16 by nine aspect ratio. Some of the others have four by three. Uh, this also has a 60 frame per second image, but you also have some cameras that have 120 frames per second, which is really nice as well. Your performance may vary based upon the camera that you have, even if you have the same goggles. So just remember that. The second thing to note is that you have no OSD elements in your recording. Now, you do have OSD in your screen. It's very limited. It's not as similar to what you see in analog goggles but you do see it in your goggles, but it is not recording on your DVR, which is kind of weird. So all this plan that you saw here today, obviously I had telemetry, but there's no way to record it. And that's a bummer. I wish there was an option in the goggles where you can toggle telemetry on or off, and then you can share what you, you've seen. So that's one thing I wish they would change. Now there is something called canvas mode that DJI did promise that's gonna come to these goggles and to the VTX. But as of right now, we don't have that feature. Let's talk about some areas of concern that I have with this whole system. The first thing here, obviously, is the price. These things are not cheap. Uh, it is really expensive to get into the digital world. Now, not only do you have to get these goggles and these things are around between $500 and $600, then you also have to get the VTX, which range anywhere between $150 to $200, depending on the specifications or the features in the VTX. So, it really isn't a cheap hobby. So just to get started with this, you're looking at somewhere around seven to $800 just to start in the digital world. So the price obviously is the biggest deterrent and it really deterred me when I first started here in the FBB hobby. Now you're probably saying then, well, I don't really have to buy the VTX, I can just get it with the drone. And that's true. That price also, you know, spills over into drones as well. For a lot of people, a lot of people choose analog drones, not only because of the lower latency, but also because of the lower price. And I'm one of those people who choose an analog drone just because of the lower price. I get the same experience, probably better experience as far as flight performance because the analog system is lighter, but it's also cheaper. So to get a drone with a digital FPV system, it's usually $150 to $200 more. So if a typical drone costs around $250, bucks, you're looking at around $400 bucks for the digital or DJI version. So that's a big consideration and that can add up really quickly. All right, my second area of concern is the usability and practicality of the DJI system. And what I mean by that is, especially for me, how often are you gonna use the digital system? So I recorded this video months ago, and here I am here with still only one digital drone. I have not bought another drone with the DJI Vista or VTX unit. So I'm still rocking a lot of analog drones here. And sometimes some of the smaller drones that I use, just like this one right here, there's no option or you can't even fit a DJI air unit in here, it's just too small. 
So the reality is how practical is it? It's really nice to have, but unless you have a whole bunch of digital drones or DJI drones, or you have a lot of Vista kits, the truth is you're not really using it very frequently. Okay, so my third and final concern about this whole system here is the fact that we have other manufacturers entering the digital space. And what I mean by that, we have other companies like HD Zero, Fat Shark, with newer technology or an alternative to the DJI systems. Now, these are their first iteration of those systems, so it may not be as polished as the DJI system, but they are offering different things that the DJI system isn't offering. Now, this DJI system has been on the market for years now, at least, what, four years or more right now. It's, it's, it's getting a little long in the tooth there. And DJI is a very, very quiet company, meaning there's not too much rumors or, you know, buzz about their, you know, updated system. There's not too many firmwares or too many features that they've been releasing. As I said before, you know, we all are expecting canvas mode and there's been no updates yet. So these newer systems, can provide maybe canvas mode, they provide, you know, lower latency, very, very fast imaging, and they have decent range as well. So these newer companies are right on the tail of DJI, and I suspect in the next maybe year or two, uh, you might find a lot more drones coming from the factory or from these manufacturers with those systems, those digital systems baked or built into the system, so, or built into the drones. So let me know what you think about this whole digital system. Is it for you? Is it too expensive? Are you waiting for these up and coming new digital systems on the market? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, leave them down there as well. I'll be happy to answer those. While you're there, please consider subscribing to the channel. Therefore, you'll be notified whenever I do make a new FPV video because I will be making another video right now to find an alternative way or another way to use your DJI goggles with these analog drone guys. Don't be like me having your goggles just, you know, in the closet, just catching dust. So yeah, use your DJI goggles for both digital and analog drones guys. So if you want to see that video, hit that subscribe button so you'll be notified whenever I do publish that video. So anyways, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.